Hey, what's going on guys? JMac here. So today I'm going to go over a Torment 6 Speed Jade build running the Ingeom weapon and a Thing of the Deep offhand. Now, prior to patch 2.2, it was definitely best to run a Wormwood and Speed Jade builds just because it casts Pestilence for you. That's still a really good option. I would say that and this build are pretty comparable with one another as far as speed goes. But I wanted to give you guys another option, and uh, this one's a lot of fun. Obviously, it is reliant on the Ingeom proc. But once you get that, you should be able to move quick enough through a rift that you, know, you can keep it going almost the entire time. So let's get right into it with the abilities. So we've got Hot Resentful Spirits. Now you don't really need to run Poison Spirit here for more single target damage. It's much more important in a T6 speed farming build to be casting two spirits at once. And on Elites and Champions and Bosses, you're going to be casting this obviously. Every once in a while on trash, but for the most part, Locust Swarm Pestilence will take care of the, the majority of the trash. This is going to spread very quickly. And then once you have the Ingeom buff going along with Grave Injustice, you can then pretty much spam Soul Harvest. And uh, just blow trash up, really. Spirit Barrage, Mana 2. This is going to put a spirit above our heads for 20 seconds that casts out Spirit Bolts. And this will break wreckable objects for us to then proc our Warzekian Arm Guards. For even more movement speed you're going to see kind of a movement speed theme here you know for t6 obviously you need to be moving as quickly as possible to make it efficient enough to to run it on torment 6 and uh you know we don't have things like teleport like wizards do or dashing strike like monks do to really move around the map quickly so we need a lot of movement speed spirit walk jaunt again more movement speed there soul harvest siphon we're going to have the effect of every rune with the four piece jade bonus so it doesn't really matter what rune you run here Horrify Stalker for, again, more movement speed, and also with the Rochelle's Ring of Larceny, every time we horrify an enemy, we're going to get a short burst of speed as well. Fierce Loyalty, 30% more movement speed when you have a pet following you. We're going to run the Belt of Transcendence to proc this, since we don't have any pets on our skill bar. Grave Injustice for more cooldown reduction. Gruesome Feast, we're running Thing of the Deep, so it's pretty easy to keep 5 stacks going. Obviously, the faster you're moving and killing, the easier it is to keep 5 stacks up and running. And then we've got Creeping Death with the Quetzalcoatl. It's going to be dealing more damage for our dots. And then also when we Soul Harvest with the six-piece Jade bonus. Let's take a look at the gear. So we've got the Ingeom weapon. Now this is only an eight-second one, but uh, it's been totally adequate for me for T6 farming so far. Obviously a nine or ten-second would be better, but I don't think you need it. This is obviously what makes the build work, and uh, an Ancient One is going to be ideal. We've got Thing of the Deep. Now... We're rolling Locust Swarm damage on this currently. I kind of have a mix and match between Locust Swarm damage and Haunt damage on my gear currently. I think Locust Swarm overall is probably the best just because on Trash, there will be certain mobs that maybe you don't end up soul harvesting. They're out of your soul harvest range. And as long as you don't move too far away, the Locust Swarm is going to end up ticking and killing the enemies. So I think that's a little bit better just because you're not casting Haunt all that much. But I don't think the difference is big enough that it will really change your clear speeds too much, whether you have Locust Swarm or Haunt damage rolled on your offhand, shoulders, and chest. The big kicker here, obviously, is the 20 pickup radius for picking up health globes from far away for Gruesome Feast, and also just picking up all the gold that we see with the Boon of the Hoarder gem to get a burst of speed from that as well. As far as Jade pieces go, they really it's not too terribly relevant how well they're rolled, for T6 farming just because you're, you know, killing things so quickly anyways. As far as the Jade boots goes, I mean, you could roll the movement speed off of these and get your movement speed from Paragon, but again, it's really not that big of a deal there. We got the pants with two sockets for the extra intelligence and then an armor roll. We also have a nice pickup radius roll as secondaries on both of these, which again, the more pickup radius, the better. I mean, with the 20 from the Thing of the Deep, it doesn't, it's not necessary. But, you know, if you have secondary pickup radius rolls, it's pretty nice. And then we've got the chest piece with haunt damage there. Again, that could be Locust Swarm. The shoulders with haunt damage and cooldown reduction. And then we've got the gloves with crit damage, crit chance, and CDR. Now, in a T6 build like this, especially with the NGOM, the CDR is not near as important as it is in normal Jade builds. But make sure you get the crit damage and the crit chance there for more damage to your dots. And then we've got the Ring of Royal Grandeur to get the six-piece bonus. This has crit chance on it. Ideally, you want either crit chance or crit damage rolled on there. 
Then we've got the Warzekian Arm Guards. Again, when we break a wreckable object, we're going to get a burst of speed, which is quite nice. This has poison damage for our Locust Swarm, and then some extra crit chance as well. As far as our amulet, really any amulet with int, crit chance, crit damage, and a socket would be fine. Alternatively, poison damage, crit damage, crit chance, and a socket would work as well. We've got the Quetzalcoatl Voodoo Mask. It's going to buff our dots, give us much more damage, and make sure that we're basically one-shotting all the trash with Locust Swarm and Soul Harvest. And I've got a CDR gem in there currently. You could probably honestly go with like any gem. The CDR doesn't end up mattering all that much from this. Between the NGOM and Grave Injustice, CDR ends up not being really all that amazing in a T6 build setup like this. But you can go that route. You could go for an experience gem. You could go for more life if you feel like you're maybe a little bit too squishy. If you're going really glass cannon or something like that. It just kind of depends. Play around with it and see what you like. Got the Belt of Transcendence. Again, whenever we hit with a Mana Spender, we're going to summon a Fetish Sycophant. So we should have out like 15 Fetishes from this pretty much all the time. They're going to do a little bit of damage, you know, here and there, running around attacking things. But for the most part, this is really just there to proc our Fierce Loyalty passive. And then we've got the Rochelle's Ring of Larceny. This thing is really, really important. You're going to get a burst of speed for 4 seconds after fearing an enemy. Now that's our Horrify, obviously, is going to be fearing. And this just gives us a ton of speed that we're going to have up the majority of the time. Now this one isn't rolled terribly well. It rolls up to 60% move speed. So obviously the higher, the better there. As far as legendary gems go, we've got the Boon of the Hoarder. Chance on killing an enemy to cause an explosion of gold. And then the secondary is gain 30% increased movement speed for 2 seconds after picking up gold. And you know, with all the pickup radius that we have, we'll have this buff going pretty much all the time. Got the Bane of the Powerful I really like. After you kill that first elite pack, you should have this buff running... Pretty much the entire rift. And then as far as the third gym goes, there's a ton of options. Decide what you like and go ahead and run it. I'm running Gym of Efficacious Toxin currently for more damage. You also detonate the dot from this as well when you soul harvest, which is quite nice. You could also run like maybe Wreath of Lightning, ranked up to 25 for even more movement speed if you wanted to. There's a few options there. You could go Bane of the Trapped. It just kind of depends. Play around with it and see what you like and go ahead and run that. As far as Paragon points go, get as much movement speed as you need. I had 10% on my boots, so I needed 15% here, then went intelligence. Offense-wise, crit chance, crit damage, and then cooldown reduction. In most Jade builds, you go cooldown reduction earlier than that, but again, in T6 with the NGOM, you really don't need to. Defense-wise, armor percentage, life percentage, all resist. Utility-wise, area damage, and gold fine. Gold fine for the Boon of the Hoarder, and then resource cost reduction after that, I suppose. Life on hit is really pretty irrelevant. Honestly, most of this doesn't really matter too much for T6 farming. So anyways, guys, there's the build. I think it's a pretty nice alternative to the Wormwood for T6 farming on Witch Doctor. Now, other classes are still going to outperform Witch Doctor on Torment 6. That's just kind of how it is. But if you are, you know, you have your heart set on running Witch Doctor on T6, then I think this is one of the best builds to do it. So anyways, guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.